Hello guys, so welcome back in the next chapter of painting the Hannibal, the, the premium version. As you can see, everything is pre-painted in metal, all the things are taped off, masked, everything is ready to go. We still have no decals yet, I will work around it later, but for now I'm going to show you how to pre-shade. It will help you later on in the process uh, while weathering. So I like to pre-shade before we go about with the weathering. This will be done with oil paint, so uh, let's get at it and see how it's going to turn out. First thing we're going to do is do some pre-shading. I did a little test on this side just to make sure I got the right consistency of paint and all that. But we're going to do the whole thing. This is also up to your choice. I mean, if you really don't want to do it and wait after the decals are on or there are many ways you can apply uh, weathering effects. But I like to do a little bit of pre-shading so it, it really speeds up the, the process and also it helps a lot during weathering. For that I use raw umber from Uptown 502. As I mentioned in one of the previous videos about this, about oils, this is the best on the market. No matter what, I, after working with oils for more than 40 years, this is the best product out there. Uh, it's very smooth, you can, you can blend it, you can keep blending it, the pigmentation is very little. You can either mix it with something, you can dilute it, you can airbrush it. There's a lot of possibilities. Also, I like their color. They have all kind of stuff, but I like, I like to work with, with a basic four or five colors, like this one is the raw umber, you have the burnt sienna, you have the, the smoke, you have engine grease. So those are the ones that I prefer to work with and will do the trick. So let's get started. The first thing of course is I already mixed some in a little cup. I mixed it with white spirit. You can use paint thinner, works just as well. This time I used some AK Interactive White Spirit, but you can find those in the drugstores or at Home Depot. Enamel paint will just will work just as fine. It's about, it's about one part of oil and then three or four parts of thinner. Uh, very liquid, very thin, very diluted, because you, you really don't want to lay it on there thick. You, you want to lay it on there in different layers. And at least if you make it this diluted, you have control. So the first pass you, you pass over it, it might not be dark enough and then you go over it twice or three times. It all depends on what you want to do and how dirty it, you want to make it. Pretty simple. If you're not satisfied with it, you can wipe it off. It will immediately come off with a cloth and a little bit of thinner and it, it will wipe clean off. So you don't have to worry about that. So let's get at it. It's also important that you put your airbrush on a very low setting, you turn almost the needle completely shut, and then you're just making passes over it in, in the direction you want to. That's why it's very important that you, you don't open your airbrush too much because if you do, you might get too much at once. So it's better to do it in a smooth, very small stripe or streak and then keep going over it until you're satisfied. Especially accentuate where the panel lines are. So later on when everything is varnished and you start hand painting or hand applying the raw umber, at least most of the work is already done.
Now when you do this, when you pre-shade, you try to get the dark shading more concentrated into the middle here and then you fade out towards the end. You don't want to make it dark all the way because that's going to be maybe a little overkill. But when you concentrate around where the, the main the cockpit is or the bunker and then feather it out, that's the, the result you want to achieve. And don't overdo it because I'm already cutting it very close. There's still a lot more weathering going on with the brush and you just don't want to get too dark or do too much with the brush, with the airbrush. Finish this part here. This is also a, a job, you need to take your time for it. It's just something that you can't do at once. It need, you need to be patient. If need be, just walk away for a, maybe an hour or so and come back because the saucer is a pretty good size. So you have to be just patient and don't rush it. Sometimes you need a little help from your fingers, but that's okay. It's part of the weathering process. If you see something that is a little too accentuated and you did too much, you would be amazed how much your fingers can accomplish. And that's the beauty from the oil paint. Yeah, it lets you do that without any problem. That looks a lot better. Yeah, that starts to look like a flying saucer. It's all up to your perception. If you want it a lot cleaner, you can do that. There's no harm to have a factory new saucer. I just like mine a little uh, salty. It went already through. Well, in this case I can't say battles because it's a civilian version but at least uh, every time you make a, a space trip or even when you look at the Discovery and you look at those vessels when they come back there's a lot of dirt in there, a lot of dust, a lot of grime so that's what I like to accomplish. Now I'm using my fingers here but as I mentioned before you can use a brush, a dry brush that will get you some result but the brushes are coming in more during the weathering process when you do everything by hand when you apply the oils into the panel line to bring them up that's where brushes are more handy I think I got the right the right kind of look so I'm gonna continue now with accentuating the panel lines it's a lot of work but it's worth it Sometimes when, when you have like crevices, like this is a little complicated area here, you just try to blend everything with a dry brush. It cannot be any thinner on it, completely dry. And then you can easily, and because of the quality, because of the quality of the Aptalin 502 color oil paint, this is very easy to do. The result is so rewarding. And I would like to remind you that I, I did not put a flat coat in there yet, or a dull coat. We'll see how it goes because I would like to keep a certain sheen on it so I might try to experiment once the color is absolutely dry maybe after, the, after a couple of days then I'm gonna experiment since it's acrylic and I can add some enamel thinner to it I might try to do it without a flat coat but or a satin coat but I'm not sure as for now the paint is pretty dry so I can easily without any problems try to blend my oils if I think there are spots that are a little bit overdone The whole working with oils kind of setup is a trial and error. It's based on a trial and error. I, I did this over years and years and years of practice. And I, I, every time I, I do something, I find something out uh, or I learn something or I try something that I shouldn't have done and then it, it, it turns out real, real great. For instance, I spilled, as you can see here, 
uh, I spilled some of my, my paint actually. I, I held my airbrush in a certain angle and some of the paint dripped on there and I had to wipe it off. And when I was doing this, it's like, oh my God, I ruined it. But <laughs> once it dried up, it looked pretty re realistic. So uh, now I'm gonna experiment on some other uh, parts of the saucer, but this has actually turned out pretty realistic. And that, that was caused by an accident. So there's so many, many things you can try. So it's good to have a, a fairly new brush close by that you can fade out any mistakes or any splashes or splotches you made. So far I'm very happy with the result. It's exactly getting the look I envisioned. It's just a lot of work. It's just a lot of panelings that you have to touch a few times. But it's all worth it at the end. So as you can see, uh, we are almost done with the upper platform and it looks pretty good. So that's going to make life a lot easier once I start the real weathering. So I'm going to just tie up a couple loose ends here and then we can do the bottom part, which should not be a big problem. I think that's sufficient for top part. At the moment I'm very very happy with the result. Let's uh, get the top part, the bottom part out of the way. The bottom you can be a little bit more generous with how to apply the oil. As you can see, if you're a little sloppy here and there, it's no big deal. It's easy to correct. A little bit of elbow grease and clean finger. You can get a lot done. And actually the result looks pretty amazing. It might not show all that well on video, but from where I sit, it's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm very happy with the result. All I have to do now is, I'm just gonna leave it for at least 24 hours. In the meantime, I can work on my wheels and the landing gear, which I have to hand paint anyway. But... Okay guys, that's it for now. As you can see, we got a lot accomplished. The pre-shading turned out just the way I want it. Oils are the way to go. Uh, next chapter will be uh, decaling and then the final weathering. But for now, that's it. Jeffy here, signing off. If you like what we have to say and you want to see more of this, please subscribe to Squadron TV or make your friends subscribe or even your puppy. You can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.